Good morning, Compassion. Welcome to Church at Home. My name is Julie. My name is Morgan, and we're so excited you're here with us today. We are so excited to announce that last week was our first ever Church at Home. And we had such an awesome time, not only celebrating with you, but we have some exciting things to share. And, and you I, brought the party. Yeah, I brought the party. Hand me the party. Okay, here we go. So we got these awesome things. I'm going to tell you why we're celebrating. Last week, we were able to reach over 6,800 people. And it's such an awesome time to celebrate. Would you celebrate with us? That all happened because of you. Yes. And you know what's also so exciting? I love seeing all the churches online for the first time. And also, we have an awesome um, network of churches in the area. We have two churches who have helped us go online um, this week and past week. And we just want to say thank you for that. And so we have something special for all of you watching. We're actually going to have a fun contest. Yeah. So get ready to listen up. Because caffeine is involved, and I know many of you parents probably need caffeine. Who needs yes, caffeine? I definitely need it. We start school on Monday. I have four kids, so bring the caffeine, please. Yes. So for the game, we're asking that you share. It's called Share Compassion. We want you right now, go on the top of your page, click share, and make sure you comment share. You get entered into a raffle each time for each platform that you share, and we'll be giving away a Starbucks gift card. Woohoo! Uh, can I win this? Maybe yes. if I share it. Yeah, go ahead, share. Tell us where you're watching from, too. We also, I think we had over 20 states watching with us last week. So it's just very exciting for us to see all of you. And I know last week, many of you watched in your PJs, right? Did you do that? Definitely in PJs, <laughs> yeah. But go ahead right now, gather up your family, and go ahead, let's worship together. I know our worship team's getting ready to come on, and Pastor Myron's going to speak on an awesome message, um, week two of Not Afraid. So thank you so much for joining us, and we can't wait to see you soon. Good morning, Compassion Church, and welcome to our online service. We're so happy you're here with us. We're going to lift up worship to our God. He's the unstoppable God. He's bigger than any pandemic, and so we're going to lift up His name and believe that this morning. Sing out with us. In heaven thundered, and the world was born, and life begins and ends in the dust you formed. Let your glory go on and on And impossible things in your name that shall be done And freedom conquered And all our chains undone And sin defeated, Jesus is overcome storm was gone. Come on. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. And impossible things in your name, they shall be done. And unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Shall be done. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's say this with all of our heart today. Nothing shall be impossible with our God. Come on, church. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. And we'll shout your praise forever. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, and we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, and we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable.
so good he is the unstoppable God and I think it's important that we not just worship him in the in the good times but also in the bad times and so this song's all about worshiping God in the valley and so I pray that that's what you would do today we're in a valley church but we can still lift the name of Jesus I count on one thing and the same God who never fails will not fail me you won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. prayer this morning. Let us lift this up to him. And I count one day the same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all up in the lowest valley because you are faithful God you're over everything you're sovereign we thank you so much for that truth and that we can hold on to that truth this morning Lord I do pray that your spirit would move even though we can't be together physically Lord we know you're here and we do pray God that you would speak to our hearts through the power of your word through Pastor Myron today we lift it up all in Jesus name amen hello and welcome to Compassion Church online who's just a little excited to be here today 
I want to give everybody a big virtual high five, all of you that are joining us for the very first time. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Compassion family and all you that are part of the Compassion Church family. I just want to give you a big hug today. Thank you for showing up big last week and this week, and we're so excited about what God is doing. And whether you are facing your fears or whether you're feeling fine today, we've got something for you, and I just want to be a blessing to help you through this crazy time of anxiety and chaos that we're experiencing during this pandemic. And I, I was thinking, you know, what we put into our brain is really important during this time. And uh, I, I, I use hairspray. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed to talk about this, especially because I use this like pinkish bottle of hairspray, right? And, and I don't, I'm not like a pink hairspray bottle type guy, but what I have found is that this is the cheapest hairspray, so that's why I use the cheap stuff, and it's probably eating away at my brain. That's why I'm so dumb, but it's like the concrete hold. That's why I use it. It's like the tin. It says extreme hold, and I wanted to st tell you a little bit about how I get ready in the morning as we're getting started uh, here on Compassion Church Online. In the morning, as I'm spraying my hair spray, I noticed that I was getting some like overspray into my water bottles in the morning. And I thought, man, that's not really, that's not really smart, is it? And I thought, you know what, I better start putting the lid on my water bottle as I'm getting ready. Because what's happening is like I'm, I go to drink my water and it's contaminated. It's, it's got impurities in it, and for one, it tastes really bad. So I, I want to be careful now to always put a lid on and to, and to stop the flow of bad stuff. And that's kind of what I want to be talking to you about today. I really have a heart to help you. Uh, I want to teach you how important it is to guard your head, to be always thinking about what you're allowing into your body brain. And today we're going to talk about how you can manage your mind so that you can overcome the fears that we're all facing during this time. And, you know, it's kind of like God is saying to us during this time of chaos, anxiety, and fears, he is saying, I want to help you. And, and what I love uh, about God is like he is here during this crisis, during this valley. There's hope in the dark from God today for you. And, and God wants to help you have peace in the middle of the storm. And he wants to protect your mind. And here's the big idea today. The big idea is God wants to help you face your fears by managing your mind. We're in part two of Not Afraid, and I want to just say thank you for joining us again. And if you're out there next to somebody, tap your neighbor and say, Not Afraid. Tap them on the shoulder, say, Not Afraid. And then I want you to pat yourself on the back for joining us at Compassion Church online today because we're so very glad that you have. You showed up big last week, and you're back again today. And I just want to say thank you so much. It's awesome that we get to stay connected this way. So uh, right now, as we look into our lives, we see a lot of unsettledness. There's a lot of questions in the air today, and we've all got some concerns about the future. But God wants to help you through this time. And I've been telling people that during this time, it's a good time to check in with God, right? I mean, after all, uh, we are experiencing a pandemic right now. And I just hear from heaven God's voice speaking to us today. There's no doubt in my mind that he wants to help you with your fears. It's a great time to turn to God completely. And, and God's like our loving heavenly father that really wants to step in right now. And the way he wants to help you is by guarding your mind. As a heavenly father, he cares about what you're putting in. And I've got four boys. My boys love to play football. And I brought a football helmet today to, yeah, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Some of you are cheering already for that one. And i uh, got the best team in the world right here. And my little boys, man, they love to play football. They love to throw the helmet on and buckle in and make some hard contact, some big hits. I love watching my kids play football. And I'm always like a dad making sure that they got their chin strap buckled, their mouthpiece in, and that they've got a good helmet to protect their head, right? I don't, I don't want them getting hurt. And our, our heavenly father, God, is saying to us today, 
I want to keep you from getting hurt during this time. I want to help you to manage your mind. God wants to help you to overcome, to face, and to fight your fears by managing your mind. And we're going to talk about the fears that we face. And I don't know about you, but in this season of unrest and unsettledness, I feel like my fears keep bouncing back up, right? And I feel like sometimes, oh, I felt like I had that fear knocked out, but it came right back. Has anybody felt like that? Somebody described it like a roller coaster. You're up and down, and all of a sudden you knock that fear down, and then it comes back up. Maybe not. This fear is, we, don't, we, we already beat that fear. But some of the fears are a little bit more difficult. And I'm going to talk about four fears, four fears that we all face. And if you're a little afraid, you're in good company. The guy I'm talking to you about today is one of the world's greatest leaders of all time. His name was Moses. M Moses was afraid. Did you know that? It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to think that you've got that fear beat and then all of a sudden it comes back right in your face again. And I think during this time, that's how we have all been feeling, right? Oh, uh, I'm okay today. I'm powered up. I feel like God's got this. And then we read our news feed again, right? And we, we scroll through and we see, oh, man, I can't believe this is in the news now. Oh, man, maybe, uh, maybe my future is not as sure as I thought it once was. And we, we have these fears. Moses was fearful. He, he's one of the greatest leaders that the earth has ever known. Moses led, you say, what did Moses do? Why was he so great? He led over a million people from slavery to freedom. And not to mention this, he, he wrote the first five books of the Bible. And he uh, was the guy that really God used to write the Ten Commandments. So Moses was an awesome guy. But he's a lot like us. He had some fears too. And I want to look at four fears that Moses faced that we all faced. And fear number one is this, the fear of inadequacy. The fear of inadequacy. And we see this in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 11. Moses has been called by God and he really struggles at first. And he, he says, I'm not, I'm not able to do this. And the Bible says in Exodus chapter number 3, verse 11, Moses said to God, to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And Moses is really going through a lot of fear right now. He's fearful that he can't do the job that God has asked him to do. I want to show you Exodus chapter 4 and verse 13. Exodus 4, verse 13, we get a little glimpse of how afraid Moses was. He says, oh my Lord, please send someone else. How many of you have ever felt like Moses? Like, God, you're asking too much of me. I'm inadequate. I'm shaking in my boots right now. I, I feel like I got some courage every now and then, but that fear comes right back up to me. <laughs> I'm trying to work with me here, buddy, all right? We got some fears that are not cooperating, and that's good. We want to we want to fight against our fears until we overcome them. Moses was fearful. It's okay to have a little fear. He said, God, I can't do this. If you remember, Moses said, I'm not an eloquent speaker. I can't go before Pharaoh. I'm not your guy, God, and I feel inadequate. And oftentimes during this season, we are all thinking, man, I'm just not good enough. I don't, I don't know if I'm enough. And the enemy, man, our enemy, he plays on that fear, doesn't he? The fear of inadequacy creeps in and we think, man, I will never be good enough because of my past. And Moses had that feeling. Moses had a past. He had murdered somebody. He had uh, reacted in anger, uh, sticking up for a slave, and he murdered a guy without a trial. And so Moses had this thought in his mind, I'm not good enough, I can't speak, I've got a past. And I know the enemy whispers this to all of us. And maybe today you're saying, God, I don't know, I don't think I'm adequate to keep my business going. I don't think I'm gonna be able to 
watch my kids at home and, and work from home at the same time. God, I, I feel unsettled. I feel like I'm just not enough, but it's okay not to be okay, God says. God says, you're not enough, but I'm enough. And in our weakness, his grace is perfect and his strength is perfect when we are at our weakest, lowest point. The fear of inadequacy does creep in, but God says, I love you, you're my child, and we're going to get through this together, and I want to breathe hope into you today. That's right. Man, we have a lot of hope in God that even though we are insufficient and inadequate, God can help us overcome our fears, and we don't have to, we don't have to give in to those fears. We can overcome our fears. Fears. And not only the fear of inadequacy, another fear that Moses faced that we all face is the fear of man. The fear of man. Notice what Moses says about Pharaoh in chapter 3, verse 11 of Exodus. He was fearful of Pharaoh. It says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? This was the leader of the entire known world at this point. The Egyptian empire was huge. And he says, God, I... I don't really want to go before Pharaoh. I'm afraid of Pharaoh. All of us face this fear called the fear of man. We get to thinking sometimes like, oh, man, what are they going to think if I lose my job? What will my wife think if I can't continue to care for our family like I once did? And we start what will people think if I lose my business during this downturn? How in the world am I going to make this happen? God, I'm afraid, and we, we feel pressure. Anybody feel pressure to perform? Yes, and when you feel pressure, that brings panic into your life. And let me just warn you, during the time of the fear of man, when you're feeling peer pressure and you're in a panic mode, don't make a decision that you'll regret later. In the valley, don't undo what you decided on the mountain. Don't make huge, big decisions right now that you'll regret later. Don't give in. Don't cave to the fear of man. Another fear that we all face is the fear of change. And this is a big one because we're all in the middle of upheaval right now, right? We're, see we're seeing life totally different. I mean, we're doing church totally different right now. You're doing life totally different in your home. You you're taking care of the kids. Maybe you, you just found out that you're going to be the homeschooler and you never thought that you could do that. But now you've got to do that because the kids aren't going to class anymore, right? And we, we have, we've experienced some huge changes. Now, Moses had the fear of change going on like crazy. He, he had the happy life with a happy wife. He, he had created a safe spot for himself. And he had a man, he had everything going for him, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, God says, Moses, I want you to move. And that's a big change. He says, Moses, I want you to leave your home and I want you to go to Egypt. And the fear of change is seen in chapter 4, verse 25, because Moses' wife has a breakdown moment with all the change that was going on. She lost it. And sometimes during this time of change, it's easy to lose it. Check out in chapter 4, verse 25, what his wife named Zipporah <laughs> she says, surely you are a husband of blood to me. Wow. There was a big argument about the changes Moses was making. And she's like, Moses, I can't take this. In fact, they had already started the moving process. All this change was going on. They left the wilderness. They were heading back to Egypt. And they stopped at a motel on the way. And they had a big fight. Any of you families had some arguments during these moments of change? I mean, she absolutely lost it, went berserk. She lost her temper. 
And sometimes when we go through seasons like this, man, we have to stop and say, okay, I know there are a lot of changes going on, and I don't like the fear of change, but I'm going to have confidence that God's going to see me through. We don't like change, but we can't lose it. We've got to stay with our minds focused in on God. And fear creeps in with all these changes, and if we're not careful, if we don't keep the top on to protect what's coming into our brain, we're going to allow fear to break us down. And the fear of change creeps in. That's why, like a loving heavenly father, God wants you to be sure to protect what's going on in your brain. And the, we see it in the headlines, man. I just want to encourage you to be cautious about what you're allowing into your brain because it's going to cause you to erupt if you're not careful. Man, if you have a steady diet of the wrong stuff going in, it's going to cause you to react like Moses' wife, and you're just going to lose it. The fear of change. Fourth, the fourth fear that all of us face, that Moses faced, is the fear of losing control. The fear of losing control. Moses did something that a lot of us do when we experience trauma. Moses had trauma in his life. He had to leave everything he knew in Egypt and go on the run. He was banished from his home. He had, remember, murdered that guy, and he's like, now I'm on the run. I've got to get away. And that trauma from the past had a big impact on the way that he was living in fear in the wilderness. Check out this verse, chapter 3, verse 1. The fear of losing control Moses found himself in a safe zone. He created a controlled environment called the wilderness. He escaped. And that's what a lot of us like to do when we go through a traumatic situation. A traumatic event in our past triggers us to go inside of a controlled environment, and we try to insulate ourselves from being hurt again, and this is what Moses did, and now God is asking him to re-engage. God is saying, don't stay where you're at. I want you to follow me back to Egypt, and Moses is like freaking out. God, send somebody else. I can't do this. I want my controlled environment. I'm afraid of what's out there. And I think all of us have experienced some trauma in our lives. And when we have this trauma, we say, no, you know what? I'm going to stay. It's just me and my family. And we're not going to go back out. And we're not going to engage like we know we should. Sometimes we try to control, don't we? because of the past. And I want to encourage you, if that's where you find yourself kind of in the bunker and and being away, I, I want to encourage you, don't stay there. Engage with others. Follow God's will. God's got a plan for your life, and when you follow that plan like Moses eventually did, he overcame that fear. He said, God, I'm not going to try to control anything, everything anymore. I'm going to go forward. And, I, and you know what? Moses could have stayed in his controlled environment in the wilderness, but he would have never known the joy of what God had for him. He would have never known the intimacy of an ongoing relationship with God. Moses shares with us, teaches us through this passage to overcome our fear of losing control. Now, um, we all fight these fears. And, and sometimes they pop back up. We fight it, it comes back. We're, we're, we're trying to fight it, and you may, you may have the fear of change going on right now. All these changes, man, it's a lot. And you feel like you have victory over it at one point, and then it comes right back to you. God wants to help you face your fears. And this is the big idea again. God wants to help you face your fears by managing your mind. Here it is, the big idea. God wants to help you face those four fears and all of your fears by managing your mind. And I want to give you three ways to manage your mind. Number one, manage your mind by replacing. Manage your mind by replacing. It's called the replacement principle. If you constantly pour the wrong stuff in and you're getting overspray from bad stuff into your life, 
you're pouring the wrong stuff in. And God says, listen, you you have to put the right stuff in. Take the wrong out and put the right stuff in. This is what Moses did. Look at chapter 3 in Exodus, Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 3. It says, and Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight. This is when he had the vision of the burning bush, and it was a great sight. I want you to highlight that word great in your mind. You see, Moses was following after the goats that he was herding in the wilderness, but he turned from the goats to see something great. He turned from the normal to see the paranormal. He turned from the goats so he could be with God. He turned from what was good to what was great. And today I want you to get this principle, the replacement principle into your brain that you stop going after what is just good and don't settle for the good, but go after what is great great. And during this time when uh, there's no sporting events, it's a great time for us to kind of tune into something else. Moses changed the channel in his life, right? He channeled into God. He said, I am turning off the goats for a minute, the normal, and I am going to turn into what's great. I'm going to turn into what God has for my life. And during this time, man, it's a great time for you to make a turning point in your life and say, I'm tired of just the good. I want to turn to the great, and God's got that for you. God is waiting. He wants to help you. Man, this is your opportunity right now to lean into what God is doing in your life. It's pretty crazy, but a pastor friend of mine posted a crazy image this past week, and it was about pornography. And the image that he posted uh, was showing the spike of pornography views during the pandemic that we're facing. And I was like, at first, like, hold on, what in the world are you doing, Pastor? And he made this comment in the bio. He said, you know, I'm so saddened that people during this time are not replacing that with something that's great. And and the, the truth is, a lot of times we put garbage in and then garbage comes out. Garbage in and garbage out. And it leaves us feeling empty and unfulfilled. And I I just want to encourage all of you out there today listening and viewing to trade what is good or even what is bad. Maybe if you've been putting bad stuff in, put something in that's going to be rewarding. Go after the great like Moses. He said, whoa, I see something great over there. God's got what is best and I'm going to pursue that. He replaced the good goats for a great God. And I want to encourage you to replace the normal daily ho-hum life for an exhilarating life with Jesus Christ. Go after what's great. Go all in. Manage your mind by replacing. There's a story in the New Testament book of Acts about some brand new Christ followers. And this is what they did. They burned their old idolatrous stuff. Their things that went along with their old life. They burned it and they replaced it with the Bible. They burned the bad stuff and they replaced it with the good stuff. And I, uh, I've been doing some shopping lately, which I don't normally do, but sometimes like during this pandemic, you got to go shopping when you can and, and find some hamburger meat and stuff like that. You can only buy two. Uh, sometimes they uh, put a limit on stuff. And I, I got to thinking about hamburger meat. I never knew there were so many different like types of hamburger meat out there. Again, I'm not normal, normally the guy doing the grocery shopping. But like this particular roll of ground beef is like 80% lean and 20% fat. 80% lean and 20% fat. And it, it made me think like, uh, wow, maybe I should buy some, some more lean burger, like the 97% lean and the 3% fat. And what I want to encourage you with this today is, you know, maybe you could think about trimming back the fat. Maybe there's some fat in your intake, in your mind, and you're allowing some stuff into your brain that shouldn't be there. I want you to manage your mind. You can face your fears, and God wants to help you face your fears by managing your mind. Maybe you could trim some of the fat stuff out and replace some of the fat for some lean, good stuff from God's Word. How do you manage your mind today? 
three ways. Number one, the first way God wants you to manage your mind is this. Replace the good for what is great. Secondly, you can manage your mind by replenishing, by replenishing, by refueling, by getting into God's word. And by hearing God's word, we are able to overcome our fears. Man, we need to constantly be pouring in good stuff into our heart and mind and our soul. Uh, I was thinking about Moses. How in the world did he go from being the guy that said, God, go to the next guy. Remember Moses said, not me, God. Can't you send somebody else? How did he go from that to being the guy that led a million plus people from slavery into freedom? How did he go from being an, uh, the guy that was afraid to being the guy that was courageous? Here's how. God kept pumping in to Moses. Later in Moses' life, it said this about him, that Moses was the only man that was ever able to speak right directly with God. And we see one of those times here in chapter 3, verse 12, where Moses was being replenished by God. From the get-go, God starts pouring in. And by the way, this is how the New Testament says we are to transform our mind. We transform our mind by pouring in the right stuff. And he said, but I will be with you. I love the promises of God. And God gives, a, gives Moses a promise right there. He says, hey, Moses, here's a promise for you. I'm going to be with you every step of the way. I'm going to see you through. And I want to tell you today, God is shouting his promises to you when the headlines are full of hysteria. God's headlines are full of hope today. God shouts to you and he says, I'll be with you just like he was with Moses. He'll be with you. God says, hey, come unto me, all you that are laboring and stressed out, and I'll give you rest. I want to tell you today to be sure that you're putting in good stuff into your heart and soul. Uh, I, I encourage you right now to be sure if you haven't already to download the YouVersion app into your Bible. Download the YouVersion app. Uh, it's uh, really simple. You go to uh, the app store. You can download it directly into your phone. And then you can pull up awesome content, different reading plans. And it's just a great practical way for you to constantly stream in the good stuff into your heart and soul. So how do you manage your mind? Number one, you manage your mind by replacing the good with the great. Number two, you manage your mind by replenishing, by continually putting in the right stuff. And number three, you manage your mind by repenting. You manage your mind by repenting. And a lot of people think repenting or repent is a bad word, like it's some ugly word. But man, it's a beautiful word. It's a good thing. And I think uh, if you understood what the word repent means, it means to change the mind. The literal definition of repent is to change the mind. And that's what Moses did in chapter 3. I want to show you a real important word in chapter 3, verse 3, Exodus 3, 3. And Moses said, I will, and there's the word, turn. Moses said, I'm going to change my mind. I, I'm, I'm going this direction after the goats, but they're really not bringing me the satisfaction I'm looking for. And God is saying to all of us, hey, we're going this direction, but wouldn't it be awesome if we traded the good for the great? And we have a change of mind right now where we say, God, I'm turning for what, from what is bad or what is even good, and I am going to turn into a new direction and when we do this, man, we experience joy. Repentance is the best word I could possibly say to you right now during this time. Stop feasting your brain on stuff that is just okay or maybe bad or just good and start going in a new direction. Start feasting on God's word like never before. Turn. That's what it means to repent. To stop going this way and to start going another way, the direction that God has for your life. And maybe this is a turning point for you. Maybe God is reaching out and he's saying, hey, haven't you gone down that road long enough and felt the unfulfillment long enough? Are you searching for more? Is there something more that you're looking for? 
God says, hey, now is a great time to turn from that direction and to walk in a new way. Manage your mind by repenting. Again, we get mixed up on this word repent and we think, oh, that's an old word. It's like a, it's like a bad word almost in our culture. But, man, it is the most beautiful word that we could have because when we turn from the good and we turn from the bad and we turn to the best, to the great, that's when life begins, man. That's when we find fulfillment and peace. And I know all of us during this time are really thinking like, oh, man, what does God have for me in this season? And maybe right now God is saying, I've got this. Just turn to me. Because here's the big idea today. God cares about you. He loves you and he wants to help you through this time. The big idea is God wants to help you face your fears by managing your mind. God wants to help today. Would you turn to him to help you manage your mind? Replace the good for the great. Replenish your heart with the good stuff from God's word. And repent. Turn to him completely. And right now, during this time, I want to lead us in prayer together. And as you sit there in your living room, the family room, here we are doing church at home. Maybe you'd like to grab your husband or wife by the hand. Maybe you'd like to put your arm around your kids. And make this a special time where you can pray together. And I want to lead us in a family prayer right there in your home. Let's hug up tight to each other. Let's give a big virtual hug right now because God wants to help you face your fears by managing your mind. Man, I care about you. I want you to start filling up on the right stuff. I want you to right now pray along with me. Would you ask God right there in your heart to help you With the fears that you're facing, God wants to help you manage your mind to overcome your fears. Our Heavenly Father, God, we come to you as a family and we ask that you would help us during this time of anxiety, during these days of fear and hysteria. Help us to balance those headlines with the headlines of hope from your word. God, help us to overcome the fear of inadequacy, the fear of man. Help us to overcome the fear of change. Help us to overcome the fear of losing control. Would you manage our minds? Would you protect us? Would you help us not to let the garbage in? May we turn to you today with our whole heart. God, thank you that you want to help us overcome our fears today by managing our mind in Jesus' name. And amen. And as we contemplate what God is doing right now in this moment, maybe you're saying, I'd like to be like Moses and turn from the direction I'm going now to a brand new direction. I'm going to turn from what is good from the normal to the paranormal. I'm going to turn from what's good to the great. And now, like Moses, I want to turn straight to God completely and commit my life to him. If you're ready to make that turn, to change your mind, then I want to encourage you right now, right where you're seated, if you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and that he rose from the grave, if you're ready to commit your life to Jesus Christ, you're ready to turn from the way you're going right now into a new life with Jesus Christ, would you pray this prayer? I'll help you. I'll say a phrase, and you can repeat it right where you are in your soul. Here it is. Say, dear God, please forgive me for going the wrong direction. I turn to you. Please forgive me for my sins. I know you want to help me through this time. I believe in Jesus. I know he died for my sins, 
I believe he rose again. I turn to you completely from this moment on. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And right now, wherever you are, uh, all across uh, the valley and all across uh, the world, really, as you're tuning in to Compassion Church Online, if you prayed that prayer and you trusted Christ as your Savior, you made that turn from the good to the great. If you turn from your old life to a new life in Jesus Christ, we want to celebrate big with you. We praise God for your decision for Christ. And I, I hope that you'll take a moment right now and just message us right there on whatever platform you're viewing on. Thank you so much for being with us. We want to help you take your next steps. And we're just praising God right now at Compassion Church for how he is allowing us to reach out and to impact the world world and to help people during this time when people are looking for hope in the middle of hysteria. And I want to say, Compassion Church, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Last week, because of your faithful giving and your faithful support and how you liked and shared and commented, we were able to reach way more people than ever before in a single weekend. And we're just praising God for how you're partnering with us. Compassion Church family, you're the heroes. You're, you're continuing to to give when people are afraid. You're being courageous. And I was so, I was like blown away by how you stepped up with your online giving even more last week. And I want to encourage you right now during this time, if you have not yet set up online giving, you can do that today. You can go to our website and you can continue your giving and you can even set up a reoccurring gift that will be drafted from your account each and every time that you select. So I want to just say praise God for what he's doing at Compassion Church even during this time. And I want to ask you to continue to partner with us and thank you for how you have. We're going to continue to help people find and follow Jesus. And we're no longer enslaved to the fears that are out there and all of the hysteria. We've got hope. The headlines of this world are full of hysteria, but God's headlines give us great hope during this season. And we're no longer fear. We're no, no, no longer slaves to fear. God wants to help us through that. And we're going to sing this out. No longer slaves to fear. God's going to help us overcome. We can fight our fears as we manage our mind. Man, I love that. What a powerful message. Let's worship our God about being no longer slaves to fear. You unravel me with the melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave to fear. 
teaching did you if so write down below what you liked about it so you can comment and share with your family and friends we are so excited to announce that compassion is going to be launching our new compassion cares campaign julie why don't you tell us about it yeah so right beside our church is an assisted living center called orchard heights and we are so excited to join arms with the health care workers there and we have an opportunity for you coming to actually purchase Starbucks gift cards for them that will be delivered later on this week. You're gonna be able to find out more about this tomorrow, Facebook Live, 12 p.m. But we have someone else that we wanna reach out to as well. Yeah, we are not called Compassion just because Compassion, but we actually truly love showing Compassion. And you have the opportunity to do that now. We will be asking for you and details to come tomorrow on being able to join and help with foster families. We know there's tons of foster families here in Arizona and they're running low on supplies and we could use your help. So more details to follow, make sure you stay tuned to know how you can help with that. Yeah, and we're not just leaving you now until next Sunday. We also want to stay connected with you during the week. Make sure you check out Compassion Kids online, Compassion Students, also small groups. They're meeting in Zoom. We really want to stay connected with you. I wish we could give you a hug, but I guess a virtual hug will do for now. But we can't wait to see you next week. Bye, Compassion. Have a great week. Remember, God's got this. That's right. He's for you.